guys that's perfect for hip hop. I wanna go, throw your hands in the air, wave like you just don't care, and if you're ready for the king and grandmaster, somebody say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. At this moment, I would like to ask King Carl Gustav the 16th and Grandmaster Flash to enter the stage. <laughs> Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, and Excellences, I want to first say thank you for inviting our culture to this wonderful, wonderful gathering. I come from a small place in the Bronx, South Bronx to be accurate. Mom was a seamstress. Dad was a track builder for the New York City subway system. But dad had this, this hobby. And in the Sadler residence, me and my four sisters, Violet, Carmetta, Regina, myself, and Lily, there were rules in a household. I was not allowed in the living room where the brown box lived that sound came out of. I also was not allowed in this particular closet that was in the hallway. That was very intriguing to me. So what I did was I would watch dad come home from work every day. He would grab his spirits and he would go over to this closet and he would take these square things out, and these square things had pictures of people, flowers, uh, all types of things. But inside this paper was this black circular disc. And dad, with his spirits, would go over to this brown box, and he would put the black disc inside this brown box of this spinning thing, and he would put this arm-like thing down on it and music came out of the box. I was like, how, how did he do that? So I would watch him for a period of time as he came home, got his spirits, went over to the closet, went over to the stereo, and after a period of time I said, I'm gonna do blasphemy. I'm gonna break the rules of the house. It's gonna be the black circular disc, the brown box that was in the living room where the sound came out, and me. So when dad was at work, I took this object out and I watched him many times do this. And when I was playing the music, anybody that was in the household before dad got home said, Dad is going to, uh, in, this, in this setting, I will not say the word, but uh, you all know what I'm talking about. And this happened over and over and over and over again. But I must tell you, my dad was my first inspirator for vinyl because he was giving it to me every time I touched it. And every time he turned around, turned his back, I kept touching it. I kept touching it. And my mom was a seamstress. 
she made all of our clothing. But what was special about mom is there was the sewing machine and the needles. So I was saying to myself, where is the music coming from? So what I did is I went to dad's closet and I took out a black disc and I put it on the brown box where the sound comes out and I turned it on and I took the needle and I put it on the spinning vinyl. And my, I felt tickling through my hand and I said to myself, oh, so that's where the music lives. From that point on, as I became a teenager, dad left the house. It was just mom, me, and my four sisters. Everything from a television to a stereo to a table radio to the hair dryer, anything electrical, I became public enemy number one in the house because the problem was when I took it apart, I didn't know how to put it back together. <laughs> that was the big problem. So mom says, you can't keep doing this. So she sent me to a vocational technical high school, Samuel Gompers to be exact. And from there, I learned what was alternating current, direct current, what is Ohm's law, what is a resistor, what is a capacitor, what is a breadboard, what is solid state versus vacuum tubes. And this gave me a better understanding of how to examine the turntable, the vinyl, the stylus, the cartridge, once I figured this out and I started listening to other DJs play, I was saying to myself, why are they playing the record in this form when in my mind, the most important part of it was the drum breakdown part. So in my shopping for records, it was pop, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, alternative, Latin, Caribbean, because where I came from, Music had no charts. Music had no color. Great music was just great music. So now I had to figure out, I needed four bars of music. So when I was studying this circularly, I noticed that once I marked the parts, I would watch how many times the line that I marked on the album passed six times but it was only four bars of music that passed. So I had to reconfigure my math and I realized the average turntable travels at 33 and a third. So that counted for me to go counterclockwise six times backwards as opposed to four times backwards. Once I figured out how to take this rock drummer and this pop drummer and this uh, R&B drummer and this funk drummer, one behind another to the beat, it created a music bed. This music bed serviced the stars at that time, which was the break dancers. Couple of years later, it served for the human beings, male and female, to speak on. They were emceeing, we was DJing today, it's one of the biggest music on the planet Earth and it's called rap, it's called hip hop. I humbly want to say to you, your majesty, your highness, your excellences, I've received many awards in my lifetime, but this one here, I must say, is the most specials because you guys took time to take me apart to find out how I was thinking. So I say to you, to, to, to Marie and to the Polar Prize people and to all the esteemed guests, thank you so much. My name is Grandmaster Grant. <laughs>